Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today we're going to take a look at a publication series that may have gone under the radar for most of you. In the mid-1980s, Crown Publishing, a subsidiary of Penguin Random House, created a line of science fiction books. These were small, squarish, hardcover books. They called them Classics of Modern Science Fiction. Ten books were printed. Let's take a closer look. Number one in the series, Men, Martians, and Machines by Eric Frank Russell. Art is by Michael Booth. He's the artist for the entire series. It's identified at the top as Classics of Modern Science Fiction. At the bottom, we see that there's an introduction by George Zabrowski and a foreword by Isaac Asimov. This foreword is in every book, and it's the same foreword. Volume 1 is identified at the bottom. If we take a look at the spine of the book, I may have to show you a picture of this, you can see Crown SF Classics. And then there's the volume number. And that volume number is in the same color coding that we see on the front and back of the book. In this case, it's a purple. On the back of the book, once again, we see classics of modern science fiction at the top. We see some testimonials and a short bio. At the bottom again, we have volume one. On the inside, you'll see a listing of the books by Eric Frank Russell. We can see that the series editor is George Zabrowski. And this is from Crown Publishers, Inc. from New York. So this design is applied across the first eight books. Why do I say the first eight books? Let me take out number nine and show you. Do you notice anything different? We still have the art of Michael Booth. We still have classics of modern science fiction at the top. This color code is more to the pink. And so we see that on the side here in the numbering and on the box on the back for the testimonials and the bio. But there is something different. Have you noticed it? The first eight volumes say volume one. Number nine and 10 do not use the word volume. We can see that on the side as well. And on the back as well, we have volume one and we have the number nine. Not a big difference, but it's noticeable. The first four books came out in January, 1984. The second set of four books came out in October, 1984. And then the final two books came out in September of 1985. All 10 books in the series have a foreword by Isaac Asimov entitled, Retrieving the Lost. In the foreword, he briefly laments about how stories and novels are lost to history. The pulps and magazines and the books that haven't been reprinted. He says, Suppose there are dedicated and thoughtful writers and scholars like George Zabrowski and Martin H. Greenberg, who have been reading science fiction intensively and with educated taste for decades. And suppose there is a publisher such as Crown Publishers, Inc., which is interested in providing a second chance for quality science fiction, which has been undervalued the first time round. In that case, we end up with Crown's classics of modern science fiction, in which the lost is retrieved, the unjustly forgotten is remembered, and the undervalued is resurrected. And you are holding a sample in your hand. Naturally, the revival of these classics will benefit the publisher, the editors, and the writers, but that is almost by the way. The real beneficiaries will be the readers, among whom the older are likely to taste again delicacies they had all but forgotten, while the younger will encounter delights of whose existence they were unaware. Read and enjoy. The books were published in a unique shape, a square that was neither rack size nor paperback size, yet much smaller than hardcovers. Let's take a look at the books. Unless otherwise noted, the foreword will be by Isaac Asimov, entitled Retrieving the Lost, and the introductions will be by George Sabrowski. Volume 1, Man, Martians, and Machines 
by Eric Frank Russell, originally published in 1955. Volume 2, The Joymakers, by James Gunn, originally published in 1961. Volume 3, The Shores of Another Sea, by Chad Oliver, originally published in 1971. Volume 4, The Classic Philip Jose Farmer, 1952 to 1964. This volume is introduced by Martin H. Greenberg. It is a collection of six stories. Volume 5, The Classic Philip Jose Farmer, 1964 to 1973. This volume has an introduction by Martin H. Greenberg. It's a collection of eight stories. Volume 6, The Forgotten Planet, by Murray Leinster. This volume also has an author's note by Murray Leinster. The Forgotten Planet was originally published in 1954. Volume 7, The Paradox Men, by Charles L. Harness. This volume has an afterword by Brian W. Aldous and an author's note by Charles L. Harness. It was originally published in 1953 under the title Flight Into Yesterday. This edition has been substantially revised. Volume 8, Unearthly Neighbors, by Chad Oliver. There is an afterword by Chad Oliver. It was originally published in 1960. This edition has been substantially revised. Volume 9, Shadows in the Sun, by Chad Oliver. There is an afterword by Chad Oliver. Shadows in the Sun was originally published in 1954. Volume 10, Greener Than You Think, by Ward Moore. Greener Than You Think was originally published in 1947. Greener Than You Think by Ward Moore was a major influence on the writing of John Christopher's novel, The Death of Grass. You can find a review for this book on my channel. When I looked at this list of 10 books, there's a few things that jumped out at me. One, they're all male authors. That includes those who've contributed forwards, introductions, and afterwards. Two, three out of the 10 books are by Chad Oliver. It makes you wonder if there is some sort of contract that Crown Publishers has gone into with Chad Oliver. Three, Besides the collection of Philip Jose Farmer stories, we also have in the first book, Men, Martians, and Machines, a collection of stories by Eric Frank Russell. The seven remaining books were novels. Watch for Crown Publishing's Classics of Modern Science Fiction in your used bookstore. I think it's quite an attractive series on the shelf and in the formatting. Let me know in the comments below if you've been collecting some of these books or tell me which series you're collecting. Are you sad to see this series stopped at 10 books? What do you think of Zabrowski as an editor? Until next time, keep going to used bookstores and keep collecting.